teaching. It's a part of the apostolic doctrine or teachings or foundation. So in other words, he's saying, so just do it. Let's not make a big deal about it. All right, he says, and we will do this. Uh, that is proceed to maturity, if God permits. For it is impossible to restore to repentance those who have once been enlightened spiritually and who have tasted and consciously experienced the heavenly gift and have shared in the Holy Spirit and have tasted and consciously experienced the good word of God and the powers of the age uh, of the world to come. Okay, and then have fallen away. He says it's impossible. It is impossible to bring them back again to repentance since they again uh, nailed the Son of God on the cross. It's like nailing him to the cross all over again, trying to make something other than what it is, starting all over again. We've got to teach this again. We've got to do it. It, it. In other words, you, you move on to perfection. You trust God for what he said. Trust him for, him, for, for, for his word. You know, laying on of hands uh, is a part of what Jesus did. Okay? And we want to be like Jesus. The apostles did it. We want to be. We want to follow in those same same footsteps. We don't want to make a big deal about it. All right. So the work of your hands uh, also manifests the words of your mouth. The work of your hands are the manifestation of the words of your mouth. So if you're believing, you know God, your hands work with you. The Bible uses expressions such as, you know, uh, a hand of Saul or the hand of the Egyptians or the hand of the enemy. Why? Because hands do the will of the entire person. So let me read that again, just so you can get an idea, because some say, well, what is the whole idea of laying on of hands? Why? Why do you have to, you know, lay hands? Why do you have to touch anybody? Well, not always. You know, many times you don't have to. But it's a teaching. It's a part of the apostle.